Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. I am so excited today because we are talking about an incredibly cool family of mammals and this family actually has eight species in it. One of the species happens to be the largest carnivore on land while another one of the species pretty much only likes to eat bamboo. Hmm. If you guess that we are talking about the bear family today, you are exactly right. So let's go ahead and get started exploring the eight species of bears. Bears are a family of mammals that include eight species. There's a lot of diversity between the eight species of bears. Bears can be found in four continents. They can be found in North America, South America, Europe, and Asia, and they can be found in a huge variety of habitats as well. They like to hang out in different places. Some bears are arboreal, meaning they like to be in the trees. Others are terrestrial, meaning they like to be on land. There is even a bear that is semi-aquatic, meaning it likes to swim. Bears also eat lots of different things too. Some bears are carnivores, meaning they're meat eaters. Some bears are omnivores, meaning they eat both plants and animals. And some bears are herbivores, meaning they only like to eat plants, which is not typically what we think of when we picture bears. So let's go ahead and start exploring the eight species of bears and what makes them unique. Polar bears are by far the largest species of bear and they are only found in the Arctic Circle, way up by the North Pole, and that includes the very northern parts of North America, Europe, and Asia. And polar bears, believe it or not, are the only carnivorous species of bear. They're the only bear that only eats meat. Most of their diet is seals, and since seals have a lot of blubber or fat, when polar bears eat the seals, they get some of that blubber, and that helps them to stay warm. It also makes them grow very large. A large male polar bear can weigh well over 1,000 pounds, and polar bears have to travel to find all of this food they need, so sometimes they travel on land. Other times they travel in water. They use their huge feet like flippers and they can swim more than a hundred miles at a time. Our second species to discuss today is the brown bear. And brown bears are the most widespread species of bear. They can be found throughout the northern parts of North America, Europe, and Asia, but not quite as far north as the polar bear. Because they live in so many different places, there are many subspecies of brown bears as well. So if you ever hear somebody talking about a grizzly bear, or a Kodiak bear, or a cinnamon bear, these are all just subspecies of brown bear. And also because they live in so many different places, they live in lots of different habitats. They can be found in grasslands, or forests, or even high up in mountains. Brown bears are true omnivores. They do like to eat small, medium-sized animals, but they also like to eat plants. They like to eat fruits and leaves and flowers and berries and roots, all sorts of good stuff. And brown bears, even though they're called brown bears, their colors can vary quite a bit, all the way from tan to almost black, and so people often confuse them with a black bear. Speaking of black bears, our third species to discuss today is the American black bear who is only found in North America but can be found in many different places in North America. Their population is very fragmented or kind of scattered throughout the continent. They can be found all the way up in the boreal forests of Canada, but then we also have a population of American black bears that lives in the tropics of Florida. When they live in different habitats, their behaviors vary quite a bit. Our northern populations of American black bears will hibernate, meaning they become inactive during the winter months when there's not as much food available and temperatures are very cold. American black bears are omnivores. They like to eat small and medium sized animals as well as fruits, nuts, seeds, leaves, and their diet changes heavily with the season, depending on what food becomes available. American black bears are also semi-arboreal, meaning they spend a good chunk of time in the trees and they are excellent climbers. 
Our fourth bear to discuss is actually the closest relative to the American black bear, and that is the Asian black bear, also known as the Asiatic black bear or the moon bear. And this species is found in Southern Asia and Southeastern Asia. They get the name moon bear because they've got a blonde patch on their chest that kind of looks like a crescent moon. They are typically found in deciduous forests and they are also omnivores, but most of their diet consists of insects or beetle larvae or grubs, but they also like to eat grasses and flowers and seeds as well. They too are semi-arboreal and they are very skilled at climbing. They have very strong front arms. They've been observed climbing trees using just their front arms, but their back legs are pretty strong too and they're frequently seen standing upright like a human. Our fifth bear to discuss is the sun bear, who actually does have quite a bit in common with the Asiatic black bear. They too are found in southeastern Asia and some of the surrounding islands, but they like to live in tropical forests. They too are highly arboreal. They have lots of adaptations to help them climb, including a flat chest, which helps them reach around and grab tree trunks, strong arms to climb way up high in the trees, and they too are omnivores. Most of their diet consists of insects and honey and fruit. And also like the Asiatic black bear, they have a yellow spot on their chest as well. Number six, we have the sloth bear. The sloth bear is found in tropical forests and savannas primarily in India, in Southern Asia. And they are omnivores, but most of their diet is termites or other insects. They will also eat grubs or fruits or flowers, but they are highly specialized for eating termites. They have a very flexible lip that allows them to slurp up lots of termites at a time. In fact, their slurping sound is so loud that it can be heard from more than 500 feet away. So it's quite loud. And they do have a blonde patch on their chest like the Asiatic black bear and the sun bear. However, unlike those two species, they are primarily terrestrial. Sloth bears are not very good climbers. Our seventh species of bear to discuss is the panda bear, who is endemic to the bamboo forests of China in Asia. And to be endemic to somewhere means they're only found there and nowhere else in the world. And they're restricted to those bamboo forests because they are herbivores and pretty much their entire diet is bamboo leaves and bamboo shoots. Now, because bamboo doesn't have very much nutrients in it and they can't get very much energy from their food, they actually spend most of their time eating. Sometimes they eat during the day, sometimes they eat during night, but they've got to be eating a lot. While they don't have a blonde patch on their chest like the last couple bears we talked about, they are black and white, and their coloration is thought to help them camouflage in the bamboo forest. Our eighth and final bear species to discuss is the Andean bear, which might also be called the spectacled bear, and this is the only species of bear that we find in South America. They live in the Andes Mountains at high elevations, and they are omnivores, but about 90% of their diet is plants. They like to eat cactus and bromeliads and fruits, but they will also eat small to medium sized animals and they are highly arboreal as well. They have lots of adaptations for climbing, including hooked sharp claws that help them grip into tree bark as they're climbing. I don't know about you guys, but that was a lot of bear facts. That was a lot to keep track of with eight species of bears that are all very different from one another that's a lot to keep track of. But don't worry, there are some things that bears have in common too, and I think we should probably discuss those for a minute. When we're thinking about what bears look like, they all have the same similar body shape, even if their sizes are a little bit different. Most bears travel by walking on four legs. They have a short tail, if we can see it at all. They have small, rounded ears and sharp claws that actually have many different purposes depending on the species of bear. Most bear species are sexually dimorphic, which means we can tell the difference between a male and a female 
usually just by looking at them. For bears, the biggest difference between a male and a female is size. Males tend to be much larger than females are. Another thing that all of our eight bear species have in common is their ability to smell things. They have a great sense of smell. In fact, polar bears are thought to be able to smell a seal for more than 20 miles away, while a sloth bear can smell a beetle grub up to three feet underground. So their sense of smell is really important, especially for finding food. Bears are also primarily solitary, which means they like to be alone. They don't like to hang out with other bears. The only time we really see bears in groups is when it's a mom and her cubs, or if it's a male and a female during the mating season. Otherwise, they're usually by themselves. So now we know, even though there are eight species of bears that are very different from one another, they do have a couple things in common, which is important when we're talking about animals that make up a family. All right, you guys, thank you very, very much for joining me today for our Bears Educating Adventures. If you are looking for a way to test your knowledge, hit that link below. Go check out our Educating Adventures website for quizzes, activities, and more, and we will see you guys at our next adventure.